Smash Bandits! Are you ready for America's craziest road race? Outrun the cops! Do whatever it takes to get them off your tail! Smash everything! Create an insane trail of destruction to dazzle your TV audience and earn the big bucks! Swap your ride and keep the action going! Unleash awesome gadgets. Give yourself a fighting chance. Rise up the ranks. Beat your friends and buy the world's hottest rides. Hello everyone, it's the Ackle Shifter here, and I'm back with yet another Forlorn Classics episode. And today, this is going to be about a mobile game. A mobile game that's still around today, you could still play it, but I feel like doesn't get talked about a lot. That is Smash Bandits Racing, a game that is truly underrated because of the car list and everything else that I'm going to talk about, but I'm not going to spoil anything here at the beginning. I'm just going to get straight into it. So let's do this. Smash Bandits is a racing game released by Hutch and was released on August 21st, 2013. The game focuses on you mostly just escaping from the cops as you drive in a random car. There are several different types of cars this game, that being the Hennessy Venom GT, the Bowler, the Hammer GT, and this Hot Rod car, and the NASCAR type car, which is honestly my favorite vehicle in the game. Now, you might be asking, what is my favorite aspect of the game? Well, it's the gameplay itself. I really do like it. It might be simple, but it is pretty fun after a while because it could be really challenging to see just how far you can go in this game without getting taken down or arrested by the police. And there are actually ways you can take down the police. For example, by using the ram power to just simply ram into them. And once they turn red, this random circle will come in. And then when you tap the police car, your vehicle will slam into the vehicle police cruiser. And then bam, the police cruiser is then taken down. And then you may proceed until you eventually get arrested. Because it is an inevitability in this game. Or if you at least just turn it off when it just resets. You won't be lasting forever indefinitely until the day you die. You could even use other gadgets in the game, such as spike strips, to allow you to destroy the tires of the other police chasing after you, cause them to slow down only a little bit, but you'll already be moving so fast at a point where you could easily outpace them. Well, unless you're impaled by, not impaled by, run over the spike strip yourself. Either way, you'll take damage and eventually you will explode because the black smoke from the engine will eventually become more foggier and black until eventually you just explode and then you'll have to go again by spending these coin gems. Now, in the game, you can unlock several different cars as you progress throughout through it. The more cars you have, the more powerful they will eventually become. And these cars are obviously based off real ones, like this one being based off the Ford Focus, and this one just being a standard dune buggy, and this is just a hot rod as I said before, and the next car we have is this one, which is just a standard sedan. I'm guessing it's a Lincoln Town car, they look pretty similar. We have a, another hot rod, okay. And then we have the Hammer GT, which is based off a Dodge Challenger. And now we have this spike car, but right next to the Thunderbolt NASCAR vehicle, my next favorite vehicle is the bowler because it basically is just a bowling pin when you go bowling. I just like that. It's just, I, I like it. I like it. And now here it is, the Thunderbolt. This is basically just an excuse to promote Smash Cops Heat. Yeah. I know that game, there's another Smash game, and it's called Smash Cops Heat, where you instead play as cops instead of the racers. I'll probably discuss that in another Forlorn Classics video someday. We even have an A-Team, the van. Yeah, remember A-Team? Yeah, that's the van right there. 
Another thing about this game is that you don't actually just play as your own vehicles, no. You can even play as police vehicles. When you explode and get arrested, you have the choice to continue as a police car as if you stole it. I love that aspect of the gameplay because it really feels like you're truly on a heist and escaping from the cops as much as you can to the point where you even stealing your own their own vehicles just so you have a chance at even escaping them once and for all. Now, one of the things I don't really like about this game is the standard races where you're not escaping the police because the standard races can be pretty blah because Instead of just being different vehicles, instead is really just mostly reskins of other vehicles. And the difficulty can be pretty high as it's nearly impossible to actually stay in front very long as the other opponents will always have priority over you and keep up with you. Some case even overthrowing you as you're about to cross the finish line. <laughs> that happened to me a lot of times and that got really annoying because the difficulty isn't really that balanced out that much, and that can kind of hurt the experience of the game. Oh, and there's also the issue with the spike strips, where you can also get affected by the spike strips, but yeah. But anyways, that's my coverage of Smash Bandits Racing. Yeah, that's the title of the game, not just Smash Bandits. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the Forlorn Classic series. There are many more to go including actual TV shows and movies, not just games, because in Forlorn Classics, we discover everything that is underrated or forgotten. So yeah, see you later everyone, and goodbye.